all of my students i am dr manazid working as demonstrator in the department of community medicine government medical college srinagar today i will be taking the session on iron this is the sub topic of the ongoing series on nutrition as everybody knows that iron is a very important trace element needed for the body so in this session we will try to cover all the aspects regarding iron and iron deficiency learning objectives for this session would be to know about the importance of iron as well as about the functions of iron in the human body to know about the sources of iron to know about the mechanism of iron absorption in our body to know about the factors that lead to iron deficiency to know about the clinical pathological picture of iron deficiency and lastly to know about the preventive and control measures which we must take in controlling the iron deficiency as all of you know iron is a very important essential trace element in our body an adult human body contains about 4 grams of iron of which 3 grams are present in the blood as hemoglobin and 1 gram as storage iron there are various functions of iron in our body it's very much important in the synthesis of hemoglobin which in turn is necessary for oxygen transport and cell respiration iron is also very important in the development and functions of brain it also regulates the body temperature of our body it's very much important as a cofactor in dna synthesis and repairs in our body iron also play a very necessary role for the production of antibodies it is a component of myoglobin cytochromes catalase and certain enzyme systems which are very much important for normal functioning of our body now let's talk about the sources from where we get this iron there are two forms of iron heme iron and non heme iron heme iron is obtained from animal sources such as liver meat fish and poultry and non heme iron are obtained mainly from vegetable sources such as green leafy vegetables ragi jaggery legumes nuts oil seeds and dried fruits heme iron is better absorbed than non heme iron and the former promotes the absorption of the latter however it's often interfered by the phytates oxalates carbonates and phosphates in the intestine egg anti also interfere with iron absorption because of phosphate and tannin respectively the absorbed iron which is less than 5% is transported as plasma ferritin and stored in the liver spleen kidney and bone marrow when the red cells are broken down the released iron is reutilized for the formation of new red blood cells the total loss of iron is about 1 mg in an adult male and about 2 mg in menstruating females so this was little bit about the sources of now about the mechanism of iron absorption in our body as from the previous slide we came to know that we have two forms of dietary iron in our body heme and non heme iron heme iron has a better bioavailability as compared to the non heme iron the absorption of iron occurs in the duodenal and the proximal jejunum and depends on the state of iron atom presence of inhibitors and promoters in the diet and disorders of the duodenum and jejunum like celiac disease and the tropical sprue the absorbed form of iron is the ferrous state or when it's bound by a protein such as heme ascorbic acid increases the dietary absorption of iron by overcoming 
the effects of all dietary inhibitors which has been discussed in the previous slide. Iron is required among all age groups across both genders for behavioral and cognitive development and better child survival. Iron deficiency results in low birth weights, perinatal mortality, increased maternal mortality, obstetric complications, poor work capacity and poor cognition. Now about the international and national scenario of iron deficiency. Anemia affects 33% of the world's population and nearly 500 million women of reproductive age group across globe. The portion of anemia among women of reproductive age group in 2011 was of the order of 29% among non-pregnant women and 38% among women who were pregnant. South Asia and parts of Central and West Africa reported highest prevalence of anemia. India also has a very high prevalence of anemia with nutrition anemia being a major public health problem in India. According to the National Family Health Survey 4, anemia is prevalent among both men and women across all age groups in this country. Approximately 53.1% non-pregnant women and 50.1% of pregnant women were found to be anemic, having hemoglobin of less than 12 grams per deciliter. In addition, 22.7% men were found to be anemic and amongst under 5 children, the prevalence of anemia was found to be 58.5%, such a huge alarming percentage of anemia in this part of the world. To make matters worse, only 30.3% antenatal women have reportedly consumed iron folic acid for 100 days or more when they were pregnant. In this slide, we will come across the factors that lead to iron deficiency. Anemia develops through three main mechanisms. Number first is ineffective erythropoiesis when there is a defect in the formation of the new red blood cells. Number two is the hemolysis when there is a pathological increase in the destruction of the RBCs. And third one is the blood loss. Nutritional anemia is one of the most important contributors to anemia and iron deficiency because the most important cause of the same which results due to the following factors. These factors are increased requirement, decreased intake, decreased absorption and utilization, and increased loss. Now we'll discuss about the increased requirement. The requirement of iron increase in certain physiological and metabolic states, example during pregnancy that leads owing to expand the blood volume, lactation, and menstruation where there is increased blood loss and among vulnerable groups like infants, children and adolescents in which the growth sports is taking place. Adults and girls are particularly vulnerable owing to an increased demand of iron for growth as well as increased loss due to menstruation which is further exacerbated if an adolescent female becomes pregnant especially when it, she becomes pregnant in the younger age. Number second, we will discuss about the decreased intake. Decreased intake due to low socioeconomic status, poor dietary practices, consumption of monotonous diet with no or lack of dietary diversifications often result in iron deficiency. The number third point we will discuss about the decreased absorption and utilization. Poor dietary practices including overcooking of food, food handling, and eating practices which result in loss of micronutrients, presence of dietary factors like tannins, phytates and divalent ions in tea, coffee, carbonated drinks, fiber and milk may result in poor absorption and utilization of iron. And the last, the fourth one is the increased losses. Presence of comorbidities like malaria, cystosomiosis hookworm infestations especially in this part of the country, menorrhagia, 
chronic gastritis, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, duodenal pathology predisposes individual to an increased risk of developing anemia. Various high risk groups which are particularly vulnerable to iron deficiency anemia are children, especially the under 5 population, pregnant women, adults or girls and elderly greater than 60 years of age. Now about the clinical pathological picture of the iron deficiency. These children or adults present with pallor, they complain of easy fatigability, they have headache off and on, they complain of palpitations, dyspnea or shortness of breath. They also have dry skin, dry hair and hair fall also in severe cases and sometimes they may have atrophic glossites. Poor motor and cognition development has been seen in infants who have iron deficiency. There is a every chance of getting prematurity in children who are born to these iron deficient women. They have low birth weights. Muscle weakness is common seen in elderly. Elderly, they also have increased chance of getting dementia. Alopecia is also having a place in it and there is increased risk of fall in elderly due to iron deficiency and overall the negative effect is on physical performance of an individual is always there. Now you can see that here we have classified anemia as per WHO classification and here we measure hemoglobin in grams per deciliter. On the left side we have a group of strata and on the right side we have classified anemia as no anemia, mild anemia, moderate and severe anemia. In the group first we have non-pregnant women in which if we have a, if they have a hemoglobin of 12 or greater we classify them as no anemia. If they have hemoglobin level of 11 to 11.9 we classify them as mild anemia. If their hemoglobin level is 8 to 10.9, we classify them as moderate anemia. And if their hemoglobin level is less than 8, we classify them as severe anemia. Similarly, for pregnant women, if their hemoglobin level is equal or greater than 11, we classify them as no anemia. If their hemoglobin level is 10 to 10.9, we classify them as mild anemia. And if their hemoglobin level is between 7 to 9.9, we classify them as moderate anemia and if we found their HP is less than 7, we classify them as severe anemia. Similarly for adult males, if their hemoglobin level is equal to 13 or greater than 13, we classify them as no anemia. If their hemoglobin level is 11 to 12.9, we classify them as mild anemia and if their hemoglobin level is 8 to 10.9, we classify them as moderate anemia. and if their hemoglobin level is less than 8, we classify them as severe anemia. Similarly, we have children, they have been divided into two groups, 6 months to 6 years of age and second one, 6 from 6 years onwards to 14 years of age. Initially, we will see what uh, the normal starter will be for the 6 months to 6 years of age. If the hemoglobin level is equal or greater than 11, we classify them as no anemia. If the hemoglobin level is 10 to 10.9 we classify them as mild anemia if the hemoglobin level is between 7 to 9.9 we classify them as moderate anemia and if the hemoglobin level is less than 7 we classify these children under severe anemia for the other group if the hemoglobin level is equal or greater than 12 we classify them as no anemia if the hemoglobin level is between 11 to 11.9 we classify these children as mild anemia. If the hemoglobin level is between 8 to 10.9, we classify these children as moderate anemia. And if the hemoglobin level is less than 8, we classify these children, which belong to the age group of 6 to 14 years, as severe anemia. Now, in this slide, we have put a table in which you can see that the daily requirements of iron for all age groups is given in milligrams per day. Adult man requires 0.84 milligrams per day of iron. Adult woman requires 1.65 milligrams per day. Pregnant woman requires 
2.8 mg per day. Lactating women, especially during the first 6 months of uh, lactation, requires 1.65 mg per day. Children in the age group of 1 to 3 years require 0.45 mg per day of iron. 4 to 6 years of age requires 0.63 mg per day of iron. And from 7 to 9 years of age, they require 0.77 mg per day. Adolescents, they have been divided into boys and girls. Uh, in boys 10 to 12 years of age, they require 1.05 mg per day. And similarly for the same age group the, in girls, they require 1.33 mg per day. Boys in the age group from 13 to 15 years of age require 1.6 mg per day. Similarly for the girls in the same age group from 13 to 15 years of age, they require 1.36 mg per day. Boys in the age group from 16 to 90 years of age, they require 1.37 mg per day of iron. And the girls in the same age group requires 1.3 mg of iron daily. Prevention and control of iron deficiency is a key in decreasing the prevalence of iron deficiency disorder in this part of the world. For that, what we do that, we use the promotion of infant and young child feeding practices. Promotion of infant and young child feeding practices include exclusive breastfeeding at birth can prevent iron deficiency. Iron stores at birth are usually adequate until 4 to 6 months of age except in low birth weight and premature infants who require iron supplements in the first 6 months. Exclusive breastfeeding for 6 months takes care of the iron requirement owing to its higher bioavailability in the breast milk. This coupled with adequate, appropriate and timely introduction of complementary feeding. Dietary practices. Improved dietary practices include cooking, food handling and consumption of a balanced diet with emphasis on local available iron rich foods go a long way in preventing iron deficiency. Proxim markers of malnutrition. Improved hygiene and sanitation including hand washing practices and address comorbidities like malaria, cystosomiosis, hookworm infestations which result in decreased absorption and increased loss of iron can go a long way in preventing iron deficiency from setting in. Increased awareness and correct knowledge among caregivers such as ANAMs, ASHAs, Anganwadi workers, teachers, peer educators, parents and adolescents in order to address the issue of iron deficiency anemia among adolescent boys and girls as per the part of Rashtra Kishore Swast Karikam. Besides this, various other steps have been taken by the government of India to address the problem of iron deficiency anemia like food fortification, national iron plus initiative, biannual deworming and now anemia mukt bharat program. Iron supplementation. In order to address management of anemia across various life stages and at different levels of care, national iron plus initiative was launched wherein the following groups are covered for supplementation of iron and folic acid. In the age group of 6 months to 59 months of age, bi-weekly 20 mg of elemental iron and 100 micrograms of folic acid for 100 days in a year are given to children. This is usually administered as liquid formulation. Similarly, in the age group of 6 to 10 years, 45 mg of element iron and 400 micrograms of folic acid is given once a week to children studying in 1st to 5th grade in government and government-aided schools. For out-of-school children, including dropouts and those who are not enrolled in schools, the same is administered through Anganwadi centers. In the age group of 10 to 19, that's the adolescent age group, under weekly iron folic acid supplementation, PIPs, 60 mg of elemental iron and 500 micrograms of folic acid is given to adolescents once week, once every week along with biannual deworming in schools through teachers and in Aganwadi centers for school dropouts. Iron supplementation for women in reproductive age group, pregnant women and lactate women is also 
given. Deworming is done biannually in the age group of 1 to 19 years of old children at all schools and Aganwadi centers using chewable tablets to address the iron deficiency caused by hookworm infestations which occurs in our stage uh, at, at a very high prevalence. In addition, spreading awareness about general cleanliness and personal hygiene, importance of footwear, avoiding open defecation, hand washing before eating and after using toilet, proper washing fruits and vegetables with clean water before consumption are some other ways to prevent worm infestation and subsequent iron deficiency anemia. Foot fruit fortification is another aspect in controlling the iron deficiency. Double fortified salt has been introduced in midday meals in school and integrated child development program wherein ferrous sulfate and ferrous fumarate is used along with a stabilizer to prevent reaction between iodine and iron. Fortification of wheat flow with iron, folic acid, zinc, vitamin B has been attempted in many states of Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Mumbai and Haryana to assess the feasibility, cost, implications and logical issues before introducing same in ICDS, midday meals and public distribution system in future. States of Karnataka and Odisha have introduced fortified rice with iron, folic acid, zinc, vitamin A and B fortification through pilots in their midday, <coughs> midday meals programs and states like Gujarat, Haryana, Tripura, Maharashtra, Chandigarh, Dadra and Nagar Haveli have also following the same. This is the last slide for today's session in which I have put the classification of anemia as a problem of public health significance. As my dear students, we are from the Department of Community Medicine and we want you to know about the prevalence of anemia and the category of public health significance of this disease. When the prevalence of anemia is less or equal to 4.9, we can say that it has no public health problem. And if the prevalence of anemia is 5 to 19.9%, we can say that it has a mild public health problem. If the prevalence of anemia is 20 to 39.9%, we can say that it has a moderate public health problem. And when the prevalence is equal to or greater than 40, we can say that it's a severe public health problem. With this, I conclude my today's session on anemia and anemia disorders. Thank you and will be back with you in my next presentation on trace elements.